Hey folks, it's your pal Mike Shea from SlyFlourish.com and Twitter.com slash SlyFlourish here with another episode of Sly Flourish's Lazy DM Prep. This is a weekly show that I do for about an hour on Sunday mornings where I use the steps from Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master to prepare for my uh, Sunday D&D game. In this case, I'll be running Waterdeep Dragon Heist. Uh, this show is going to be a little different, and I think the shows from here on out will be a little bit different. Uh, typically, I have gone over and reviewed all of the eight steps in Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master. Uh, I decided that was getting a little redundant after like 45 episodes of this show. So instead, I recorded a 10-minute video, which you can get on YouTube or you can see uh, down in the show notes uh, or down on, the, uh, down on the channel on Twitch or in the show notes on YouTube uh, that you can watch if you want to see uh, a, a longer description of what the eight steps for lazy DM prep are. So uh, while I'll still be using those steps while I prepare for my game, I'm not going to go in as much detail about uh, all of the different steps and which ones we're going to use and things like that. Uh, what else? I also recorded another video, which you can see, it's also linked down below, that goes over the whole book. So if you want to look at uh, if you want to get an overview of what is in Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master, besides the eight steps, there's another video that covers everything else. So you have the, uh, one video for 10 minutes about the eight steps and a, about, I think it's like a 35 minute video where I go over, go over everything else. I recorded those over the last couple of days. So what else, what other interesting news, uh, do we have going on? It looks like my volume is a little low, so I'm going to just move that up a little bit. Tell me if I'm clipping out, if you would, in, in Twitch. Sometimes my my mic gain gets weird. Uh, that looks about right. Uh, there we go. One of my videos was definitely lower than the other. So I'm going to be keeping an eye on that. So if you are in Twitch chat, say hello. Uh, and we can talk about anything going on with D&D. We will also talk about my game. One other thing I had, I had planned to do uh, and then nixed the plan. Uh, I got kind of interested in Microsoft OneNote as a game preparation aid. Uh, a lot of DMs, I think, use OneNote. And so I downloaded it and I uh, used it for a couple of my session notes. And I liked it a lot. Uh, I think it's got a lot of really interesting features to it. I love the idea that you sort of have a wiki in your pocket that you can link to all sorts of, uh, link to all sorts of things. But I am so used to working with text files. Uh, I do all of my work in text files. All my books are written in, in Markdown in text. And all my previous notes were in text. And I realized like there are ways that I can organize my text files that make them very OneNote-like without having to use OneNote. The one thing that really that I didn't like about OneNote, and I think it's just me, I'm weird, is I, I didn't, there's no way to export it. Like I was really hoping that there was like an export to HTML. The only reason I want that is I don't know how long I'm gonna wanna use OneNote, and if all my notes are in there, I have to use it forever, where I'd rather be able to export it and be able to view it in a web browser or something like that. When, when I'm working with text files, I know they will always be good. I can change my tools, I can change my process, I can, I can go, you know, I'm, I'm on a PC right now, I, but I also have a Mac and I have an iPhone and iPad. They'll, the, my, my text files will work on anything. So I think I'm gonna stick to using text files and markdown uh, for my game notes. So uh, let's see, we will jump over to the session prep notes. So here are last week's notes. Um, so I've been running, two, uh, I'm sorry, I've been running Waterdeep Dragon Heist, which I've enjoyed, uh, I enjoy a lot. So this is the second time I've run it. I ran it when it was a play test earlier in the year, but now I get to run it from the actual full, um, the, the, the full mode. And uh, last week's session, uh, I'm trying to, oh, they started off in the warehouse. So yeah, and Sergeant Staggett came in from the warehouse and I did, I did use the trick. I don't know, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't some game breaking trick, but it was kind of interesting and I'll probably do it again, which is does, who here saw The Departed and a couple of people like, oh yeah. And I said, do you remember Mark Wahlberg's character, Sergeant Degum, Degnum from The Departed? And they said, oh yeah, I remember that guy. I said, that's this guy. Sergeant Staggett is like Sergeant Degnum in, in, in The Departed. Now one problem is like only a couple of people had seen it. Uh, so they got it. And, and so I don't know that it mattered a whole bunch, but it was an interesting idea. So I tried that. So Stargant, Sergeant Staggett gave him a bunch of crap. Um, he kind of harassed them for a while and then finally said, just, you know, watch it. I want you guys to, you know, he's standing there in a pile of dead bodies. Is like, I'm telling you guys this one time, watch it. You know, crack me up. So then they started uh, exploring and they found a sewer entrance that was being used by uh, the people who grabbed up um, Floon. So the group got a little bit confused about like 
all of the people that are involved. They're like, so wait a minute. One group kidnapped Floon and Ragnar and dragged them to this warehouse. And then another group attacked the warehouse and grabbed Floon and ran. And then we should have. Why were these other, why were these people here? So, um, you know, they, they, they were kind of trying to noodle through. And I was like, well, they were here to see if anybody was going to follow and to clean up the mess. And then you guys showed up. I'm like, oh, okay, I guess that makes sense. But they were like, they're already getting lost among the different factions. And there's so far, there's only two. Uh, they, one, one problem is they know the Xanathar's Guild now. They're, they're aware of the Xanathar's Guild, but they're not really aware of the other guild and that, or the other group. And that's because the other group are sort of like hired mediaries of the Castle Lanterns, which I haven't gotten into yet. So I don't want to expose the Castle Lanterns too early. So I think they're going to, you know, they already know that they're like tied to nobility. But they were far happier finding the sewers, going down in the sewers and wandering around. Um, one trick with Dragon Heist that I noticed was that um, it doesn't really give a lot of advice about navigating the sewers. Um, so, uh, you know, there's kind of this whole section of, um, you know, there's this whole section of navigating the sewers, but there's not really a map. And it's sort of, you know, they you sort of wander about and you can follow the symbol. So I think you're supposed to, um, you're supposed to kind of uh, uh, narrate this. You know, you, you, you kind of just move through this session about, you know, the fact I think they, yeah, they do offer this. Like after an hour of following signs through the tunnels, you come to a three-way intersection and then you get, you know, a gazer causes problems. They love the fact that they fought a gazer. That was interesting. But then I also dropped in my ghoul crocodiles and uh, like the weird... Uh, it wasn't radiant. I couldn't figure out how to do the radiance, but I did have an unholy glyph mark rock that was surrounded by children's skulls. And um, there was a, you know, two ghoul, ghoul crocodiles, which are kind of scary because they can both bite and grapple and paralyze and drown people. So they were not terribly hard, but they were scary if they got all their hits in. And they did. So they had to like fight underwater. They couldn't, the sewage was, you couldn't see them through the sewage water. So you had to kind of go down there. And it was really kind of crazy. Um, so they fought those and that was cool. Uh, and then they wandered through the sewers and got to the sewer entrance. Um, and that I, I had a lot of, so once they got here, um, oh, there was another confusing thing. Yeah. So, so right at the end of this, this is where I got confused. And I think it was because like, it's like a one word difference. So they, they get to the Xanathar, the height of the Xanathar, right? They, they have this whole following the stream. Uh, at every location they follow, it is marked with a, the symbols are erased by members of the Xanathar's Guild every few days, but these haven't been removed. Uh, before arriving, the, the Xanathar's Guild hideout, the characters have an encounter in the sewers. There's a hostile gazer. So what I got confused is like the ladder, you know, I kind of jumped to this part. It's the characters who climb the ladder and push open the metal cover, find themselves in the cellar of the sprouting fish, a tavern in the dock ward. And it's like, but then the very next thing is the Xanathar Guild hideout. So like, where's the difference? And I got confused that, um... A uh, hostile gazer that is in league uh, guards this intersection. Once the character is defeated, they can press on. Following the corridor where the chalk symbol is located, they reach a hideout. But there's also a ladder here. Um, yeah, so you're, they're at a three-way intersection that has a ladder and continues onward. And that that I got lost there, in, even though I've played it before. Uh, I got lost there. Uh, by the way, we have a another foster cat here today named Molly. She is uh, very skittish. She spends most of her time hiding. And when I look at her, she skitters away. And certainly if I even move a hand towards her, she runs. So she'll just be knocking things around a little bit. And I'm going to have to leave her be. Um, anyway, I got a little confused. But then, I, so I kind of made something up that the ladder took them here to Q1. That it went from lower sewers to upper sewers. And the upper sewers is where the Xanathar hideout was. And that, that worked a little bit better. Uh, and then once I got in here, it was very cool. I, I had a lot of fun with the goblins. The goblin in two, Q2A, they the, the party came in and said, hey, we're the sewage inspectors. And the goblin said, we already we already dealt with the sewage inspectors at the office. We filed our form 57-A. And the party said, yeah, but there was the stamp wasn't correct on it. We're going to need to deal with the stamp. And the goblin said, no, no, the stamp is correct. I think you just need to go back and talk to your supervisors. And finally, the... Um, the party said, well, it's really better if we talk to you. And then the goblin said, hang on, we've got another form here that we think can help. And they slipped this little slip of paper out of the arrow slit. And I took my a little piece of my coffee cup, the little cardboard the hand holder on my coffee cup, and I sketched something on it with a Sharpie and then kind of wrapped it up. And I sort of stuck it out. And one of the players kind of reached out. And, and I said, it, they, they left it where it was. 
And then it kind of floated down the water and they picked it up and looked at it. And the first guy just like, oh my God, and starts laughing. And then he hands it to the next person and they started laughing. And they handed it to the next person, and they started laughing. And then finally we got to the end and the last guy's like, what is it? What is it? And they show it to him and it's a, it's a dick pic. Like they, they sketched a, a big penis. And so, uh, and the, so then they're like, well, they, they went all the way around. And then there's one goblin who's like standing at the arrow slit with his bow drawn. And the other one is drawing these like obscene pictures. And he's like, you have to wait till they pick up the picture and see it before you shoot them in the face. That's the only way this works. And then they ambushed the goblins and killed them. So that, but that was kind of funny. So then they've wandered through, they dealt with the, um, Duergar and the slime. And that was a lot of fun. Um, I used, I, I have a set of, uh, like I think it's like basically a little bit more than one set of the old Dwarven Forge from the um, original Dungeon Dwarven Forge Kickstarter, their Kickstarter, the first Kickstarter, the non-magnetic ones. So I have a set that comes in a small box that I brought, and I brought that way I can build rooms really quickly with Dwarven Forge. It's almost as fast as drawing them out. I'm sure drawing them out is quicker, but you get this kind of cool 3D layout that you can play. It's just walls, corners, floors, and I played it out. So I did that, and... Um, they dealt with the slime and they took a rest in one of the, in the slime room, which is terrible, but they needed, they were all, they're all second level, but they're burning out. I don't know how you run this at first level. So I'll give one trick, which was I leveled them after the, right in the beginning. I leveled them right after the um, uh, yawning portal scene and took them to two. And now they spend the rest of this chapter as level two. And I'm, I'm just going to bump them all one level up. And I think that this adventure works better. So it's like, this is huge. You're going through like three huge scenes, four huge scenes when they're level one. And they, they don't need to be level one for that long. It's supposed to be like, you know, super quick. So um, anyway, I leveled up right away. And then they entered Q1 and they saw the Mind Flayer. And they're like, oh my God, a Mind Flayer. And then I said, well, next week. And they're like, next week, you know, we're going to fight a Mind Flayer. So that's where we ended was uh, Q7. Uh, uh, Q7. Dot the boss fight. Uh, and this is a big room with a mind flayer, but the mind flayer leaves, although he leaves his intellect devourer, I believe. Uh, let's take a look at the intellect devourer. Uh, does it have any kind of invisibility? So it can stealth. Um, it doesn't have any kind of invisibility. Uh, but it might sort of disappear. I kind of want this thing to be scary and it's sort of, wow, it's CR2. That might be hard. Um, so we'll see how that goes. I know intellect of ours are really rough, but on the body thief thing, I'm not going to make it a permanent effect. Like that'll be something they can get rid of if they want. Or they have a they have an intellect of ours that sort of sits in their body forever. We'll see. We'll see how that works. Um, Mind Flayer leaves, intellect of ours hangs around, and you have uh, Grumshar, who is the big boss, and he is an apprentice wizard. That does not look like Grumshar, does it? But whatever. Nine hit point guy. I guess this is because you're playing at a lower level, right? So I think, I think that he will have more, um, uh, more hit points than that. Uh, in fact, I think it's uh, yeah. So it has a low level, but I'm gonna put a couple of since my guys are level two. Um, I'm going to put a couple of bandits in there too. And that way they have a couple more. However, I might only have three players today. So I might be low on characters. Although my wife had a really good idea, which is to have, uh, uh, um, Floon can actually be a character. So I might grab a stat block for Floon. Uh, what, what is a good, uh, I need a good stat block for, for Floon. I don't know, guard, like he, probably a bandit, I guess. Uh, it's monsters. Uh, da -da, humanoid. Um, sort these by CR. Oh, this is a hassle. So we're just gonna go with, uh, go for d d These do not look like core D&D. Show advanced filters. You can all watch me muck around with uh, source. Filter. Um, he could have a bandit. I'd probably give him a quarter at least. Um, I clearly suck with searching 
Uh, maybe a scout. Yeah, scout stat, stat, stat block looks pretty good. He'll get two attacks. Um, a little bit more hit points. Two attacks is quite a bit, though, so maybe not. Maybe we'll stick to Ah, uh, that's about right. I don't know. Yeah, so I think we'll we'll have uh, Floon as a as a um, uh, as an NPC that they can play if they don't have uh, everything else. So that is where uh, the game. So so where does it start? Uh, let's go. So this is our new notes for it. I've already filled out a bunch of this because I'm now one of the tricks that I used that I picked up while using OneNote. Uh, we could put a date in here. F three. Um. One of the tricks I picked up from OneNote is the idea of using a template. So I have a preset template in a folder, and I copy that template over whenever I'm making a new set of show notes, and it has a lot of the stuff already filled in that I need. So that works really well. So now, let's see. So our characters, we're going to do our quick review of the characters um, and which ones are going to be there. Uh, Jerry is not going to be there today, so we could cut him out. Uh, and who else? I think Pat is not there, uh, if I recall. Uh, Brian and Jay and Joe will all be there. Um, so we have uh, Anton Greycastle uh, is a noble, uh, Water Davian noble merchant who has dealt with uh, seafaring deals and shipping and stuff like that. And uh, Yagra is Anton's special lady friend. Um, Greek Banjo won't be there, which is too bad. He's an awesome character. John the Grizzled is an arcane dwarf cleric who uh, deals in lore and uh, is relatively dirty and non-sociable and uh, knows that something in the Nine Hells is going on in Waterdeep. Um, Aragon, uh, Ar Ar Aranis is uh, Brian's character, is a drow packed to the Fiend Warlock. He is learning more and more about his patron, who is Izakul. He's really excited about learning about Izakul. And um, that's cool. And then we, uh, Agarin is not going to be there, who is a rogue investigator, former member of the City Watch, too old for this shit, and is, uh, got kind of kicked out of the City Watch. But he's actually he's still a chamber pot, but he's actually secretly working for, I don't even want to write in the notes because it's so secret. Um, he is secretly uh, working for the Master Lords. It might be fun that he could already be a member of the Grey Hands. So, uh, but he, the player's not there today. So, uh, so our strong start, uh, the Mind Flayer leaves. He might, like if anybody goes near, he'll probably hit him with a Psychic Blast for fun. Um, uh, and he leaves his, uh, and he leaves his, uh, intellect devourer behind, uh, Floon, And fights as a scout. So that's, you know, hard to have a strong start better than starting in the middle of a big ass fight. I also, oh, let's see if I have, uh, let's see if I can get a picture. Da, da, da. I, I took a, um, yeah, I've got some cool, uh, cool pictures of what this place looks like. Uh, so let me send myself. You would think that, I actually wonder what way I can do this. Um, Uh, sorry, I'm looking around. Uh, save to files. And I can save to my D and D uh, Adventure Notes Sunday Dragon Heist. And then this one too. That puts him. I now have a shared folder. Look at that. Oh, look at that. It's apparently not a, why is it not a JPEG? That sucks. Oh, what a hassle. Um, I guess I'll have to mail these to myself. That's weird. I guess my form file format for, um, uh, 
when I save the files out, it saves them in their raw format rather than as a JPEG. I should probably figure out how to set my settings so that it does that correctly. Uh, give me a second and we will show what they look like. That's the wrong window. And then I'll come back and look at chat. I haven't looked at chat so far today and that's terrible. Very, uh, very unprofessional. Picks. Download. There they go. Sunday Dragon Heist. All right, let me get a window. Let's see, where are we? That's a good one. Bring up a new tab. Oh, hassle. Bang. And the other one. Bang. So that is uh, what the layout looks like today. So the cool bit is I built, I'm also doing my Wednesday Tomb of Annihilation. Sorry for the delay. Hopefully you think the picture is cool enough um, that it uh, is worthwhile. There's the Mind Flayer. There's the uh, Orc guy. There's his two bandit friends. He's got a big platform. There's a bunch of little side rooms. This is the room that um, the guy goes into to escape, and that's where the goblin, that's where the, uh, the goblins are sleeping and stuff. So, um, uh, the fun thing, and then here's like another cool view of it. Um, the fun bit about building this. So this is three magnetic terrain trays that I can take apart and put into a big plastic box um uh, uh they have these boxes man i'm using them all i need to buy more of them uh really useful boxes are called and i think it's the 19 liter one and it's fits three layers of dwarven forge perfectly so i built this room out it didn't take long maybe a half hour and then i i was also building another room for my tomb of annihilation game at the same time so i was kind of i had all the dwarven forge i was building a bunch of rooms and then i took these and i stacked them up and i put them away and then my wife i told her i said do you want to see what it like looks like and she said sure and i pull out the box she goes ah, i don't want to wait that long and i said no watch how fast i set it up so she timed me and in less than a minute i could set up this whole room from that box so it was uh it was pretty cool uh so what's going on in the chat i'm sorry i've been skipping chat uh in a com uh, so Pixelscapes, hi Jen says, in combination with Dropbox or Google Drive f uh, folders or any future file sync, that text file approach sounds like a safe bet. Yeah, so I'm using iCloud because I'm a Mac nerd. <coughs> um, forgot my water. Um, I'm using iCloud Drive because I'm a Mac nerd, but I have iCloud Drive on all my machines, which means uh, it's on my phone, my um, iPad, my Mac, and this machine. And I can sync files over uh, I can sync files over pretty easily. Um, so I think, you know, I have a directory structure that's called, I have a folder called Adventure Notes that's in my D&D directory. And in there I have Sunday Dragon Heist, Sunday Tomb of Annihilation, Saturday Prince of the Apocalypse, and Wednesday Tomb of Annihilation. And then in there I have a template and then I have um, the, whatever notes I write. So um, really this is the folder, the Sunday Dragon Heist one is going to be the big one that I'm using because I do it for this show and I don't really write my notes out. But the cool thing is I have a text editor on my phone that can let me view and edit the text files for all these games on my phone. So before I had to like mail myself the notes and that was really stupid. Now I can just load them right up on my phone and it's all set. So that works really well. You can also, unless you don't have photos set up the way I do, um, you can drop images in there. You can even, so the text editor that I use on my phone is also Markdown compliant. So I can literally do the same kind of linking that's done with uh, OneNote um, and it will work on my phone. So I'll give an example. Uh, this is really nerdy, sorry about this. But so uh, Intellect Devour, right? I can actually go in here and go bang, Intellect Devour. And then I can uh, go to my browser window and we go here and we look up, let's go. Uh, I can look up the intellect of hour and go bang, grab that, uh, stick it in, where did it go? In there. So now it looks a little weird in text. Mind Flayer leaves, uh, perhaps it's like, it's like it leaves his intellect of hour and you see the intellect of hour link there? On my phone, that will be hyperlinked. The, the word intellect of hour will be hyperlinked and I can click it and it'll go to D and D beyond and pull up the intellect of hour. So that's kind of exactly what, um, uh, that's exactly how OneNote works. Only I'm typing in the links in markdown, uh, rather than, um, 
uh, uh, I'm linking them in Markdown rather than um, linking them using uh, OneNote. So uh, I don't know that it, you know, like for Intellect Devourer, I don't know it matters because I have a monster manual there. But I think this would be really useful anytime I'm using a stat block that isn't from the books that I have on hand. Um, it can also be handy for like the maps and stuff. So I can, for example, um, say scenes are, and then what's this scene? This is, um, uh, I can put the boss fight. Uh, but I can go to, I have too many browser windows open. Uh, where were we? This, no, that's not right. Here, right? I just want the map. So if I just want the map, I can drop the map URL in there. And then, uh, I don't know if I can show you, but like immediately on my phone, because it's all synced, uh, I can go to browse, adventure notes, Sunday, March 3rd. So on my phone, uh, are the same notes and I can say, I can turn it into Markdown, which looks almost exactly the same. The difference is I can scroll down and uh, I will see strong start and it says scenes. I don't know if you, uh, let's see. It says, oh, that doesn't look good at all, does it? Uh, scenes, sewer boss fight. And I can click that link and bang, it goes right to the map. Oh, that doesn't, you can't see that at all, can you? Trust me, there's a map on there. So, um, yeah, so I can link my notes while I'm talking here on the show. And then in the, um, uh, in the game itself, uh, uh, in the game itself, it'll all work. So that, that works pretty well. The only other trick though, is I also use these notes and I stick them right into YouTube, which means I'm going to be dumping raw markdown into YouTube and Mar YouTube does not format markdown. So it looks bad. I don't know that I care that much. Um, so let's see, but yeah, come, uh, it's a lot of factions to keep track of. Uh, yeah, it is, although I'm only having three, although this interim snuck their way in, but this interim and mine are just raw's interim, but it's gonna get worse. Uh, uh, Radic G says, I just finished lazy preparations for second session of Horde of the Dragon Queen. Great, I hope it worked. Make sure to make it your own. There, there'll be parts of it that work well for you and probably parts that won't or other parts that you think are missing. Feel free to add them in. Uh, coming to stream here, it floated down in the water and the first thing that comes to mind is Caddyshack and the reality was worse. Yeah, it was pretty funny. And they're like, talk about regressing to a 13 year old level of, of goblins drawing a dick pic. But I did, I was like, hey, it's true to the character. Like that's what the goblins would do. You know, and they're like, yeah, yeah. Which part of the lazy dungeon master is that? So it was pretty fun. Um, let's see, we got uh, we got help from the ranger swashbuckler, Raynar. Yeah, uh, I love running for small parties. I think, yeah, th I, I, like four, four to five is my ideal. Three is fine, but um, I think three can work okay. The balance gets a little off and four feels so nicely balanced. You can throw a meaty group of monsters against the guys and they're not gonna get killed. Um, and four to five, the synergy of the players works really well. Like they're playing, they're riffing off of each other. If a couple people are quiet and on their phone, it doesn't matter too much because the other three are working together. So with three, if one person's tuning out or a little tired or whatever, now you're down to two, right? So um, that's, I think they can matter. Uh, Pixelscapes ran Horde of the Dragon Queen three times. Yeah, I kind of wish they would go back and redo it. It's so popular. I guess you can't, like it's, it is what it is. But like a, if they were reprinting it, it would be worth just tuning it a little bit. But I don't know, whatever. It's great. People love it. Some of my most popular articles on my site are the Horde of the Dragon Queen advice that I give. So I can't complain. Um, so uh, Evil John says you can export out of OneNote in the web portal. You can, but the file thing, the file format you get is really goofy. It took a while for me to figure out how to do that. And when I did, what I got out of it was not something I could manipulate in anything else other than OneNote. I don't know if it was a zip file and I could unpack it, but I have a feeling what I'd get on the other side is a bunch of XML that I wouldn't understand. So text, I think, is going to work for me. I, I, I'm... I'm on board. OneNote is very cool. And for people who don't mind using it, I think it's a great tool. And, and I just like, I already have a process and I think it works well for me. Um, don't you miss cross-linking? Uh, don't you miss cross-linking in your text notes though? Um, I don't, because I don't really link my notes together. The one thing I might have done and I started to do, and maybe I will do this, is start to keep track of NPCs in a separate file. So I always have like one big text file full of NPCs. And that way, like in game, I can keep track of NPCs and where they came from. I think that would be a useful thing for me to do. And I, I will, I will probably, maybe we'll, maybe we'll start that right now. Um, 
But uh, are you using Bear as your text editor on my phone? No, I'm using um, IA Writer. Uh, I don't know Bear. Is Bear good? Yeah, I have a I have a, a thing called IA Writer, and it's a nice, clean editor. What I like about IA Writer is like if I'm at a convention or something like that, and I still want to write an article, I can stick my phone in a little um, like a picture fan, picture frame, picture stand, like a phone stand, and I have a little Bluetooth keyboard, and I can type as though I had a laptop, and it and it means I can write whole articles and everything like that. Um, so yeah, um, Pixelscape's changed to Horde of the Dragon Queen and Rise a lot, but it was a good experience on how I run everything now. Yeah, uh, I'll check out Bear. Um, what is Bear? Let me, I don't find this. I'll look at it later. I, w- I will remind myself to look up Bear. Uh, I'll add that to my to my little notes here. Bear. I have a little to do app. Um, yeah, so let's take a look at that. So let's make a new file here, and we will call them uh, Wednesday. Oh, sorry, Sunday. Dragon Heist NPCs, and we'll just have a nice file. And this is in our Sunday Dragon Heist folder. And we can just start keeping track of NPCs. So if we go to February 24th, we can grab, look at all these NPCs. Um, and we can drop them right into our NPC list. Um, I will probably uh, start, uh, give them each their own lines so they can go into big paragraphs and whatnot. Uh, then of course they have to be alphabetical. This is probably the worst way to do alphabetical. But as a programmer, I should probably know better. Uh, but there's not that many yet. There we go. Um, so now we have our list of NPCs, right? And I can just keep track of this. Uh, let's make this a nice markdown thing. Um, and if I wanted to, I could wrap these all in strong. So I don't think we're going to bother. Let's, we're going to just keep it easy. So um, now as I'm going through and um, um, adding more NPCs to the game or more NPCs show up, uh, I can keep track of them as they pop in, which is nice. Sometimes all I need is the name. So I really don't need a whole lot more than this. Like I know who Raynar Never Ember is. I know who Volothan Get Arm is. I know who Floon is. So I don't, I don't need to write a lot about them. But, you know, uh, let's see. I can close that. Uh, so let's go back. Okay, so I've got a strong start. Mind Flayer leaves, big fight, blah, 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 blah. Uh, what other scenes? So they're going to uh, escape from the sewers is the next step. Um, where's my chat window? i got to move this stuff so I can see the chat window while it's going on. Bear is Apple's only text markdown app. Uh... Oh, is an Apple only text slash markdown app. Yeah, I'm using IA Writer and I, it does the same. Well, I'll take a look at Bear though. If more than one person likes Bear, then there's probably something to it. Um, uh, Reddick G says, I have a separate file with general info about the campaign fonts, fronts, factions, and the list of NPCs. Yeah, so that works. Uh, and I have one for this too um, in that folder. So uh, let's see if I'll pull it up. Uh, I have. Dragon Heist NPCs. Uh, I have the session zero notes, right? And this has the hooks, the fronts, the grim portents. So this is like the campaign guide version, right? Um, I probably don't need all. Uh, no, this was the note. So um, yeah, this is my session zero notes. Uh, the, who are the factions? What's going on? So I could update this or I can check it out. But um, I'm probably not going to put the NPCs in here. I think NPCs being in a separate, uh, I don't know. Maybe it's better to have that sort of, you know, a one single, f- um, maybe it's good to have that one single file that contains all that stuff. I don't know. Now that I'm thinking of that one note mentality, I got to rethink how I'm kind of keeping track of my notes, but I don't want complexity. I want simplicity. Fewer files are better. It's not really hard to find these things. So, you know, I think, I think, yeah, maybe it's better to, maybe we'll do that. We'll go into the Dragon Heist notes and we'll just have an NPC section. Uh, Let's have an NPC list here. Uh, And that gives us our fronts, 
NPCs, campaign hook, uh, the three facts, uh, and that sort of stuff. I can dump all this because uh, that's all for YouTube. Uh, so there we go. That works pretty well, I think. Um, Pixelscapes has a Google spreadsheet of NPCs, so I can filter by faction, current location, but I have a lot of NPCs. I think a lot of people have a lot of NPCs, and I'm, I'm too lazy, and I, I have few. And I often, the other thing is I'll let NPCs go. I don't know that I want to hang on to them unless they come back. But on the other hand, I, it, it looks like amateur hour when somebody, when the players remember an NPC, and I totally don't know who they're talking about. So it's probably, it's probably better. Why is this text.text? .text? That's weird. Uh, my March 3rd notes. No. And then there we go. Uh, escape from the sewers. So I believe the sewers have um, an escape. Uh, if we got a friend in need. Yeah, there's the getaway passage, right? So um, this over here on the on the right hand side, there's two ways out. There's this secret en exit, which is where um, the Mind Flayer went, and then there's a secret passageway that leads underneath the sewer area on the northeast side. And I think that that's where, uh, you know, of course, my map doesn't have the uh, numbers on it. Uh, so uh, eight, nine, uh, and 10 and 11. So, um, yeah, eight is the getaway passage. Nine is private cellar to the Peabody's brew. Um, uh, and they, yeah, they end up in a, in a, you know, in a cellar. Uh, I guess no one's been using it. Interesting. So like they never, nobody actually used this while the Peabody's were there. They don't know that there's an exit here. So it might be fun to make this old, right? So I think the escape, um, one interesting thing about Q9 uh, is that it is old and unused, right? And there might be uh, cool devil worship. We'll throw a little bit of that fiendish stuff in there. Um, uh, the sewers, uh, or the escape. Uh, It's an old and fiendish. That's a good secret. So after that, then it's uh, uh, I believe uh, they return to the yawning portal, right? So that, then they can also explore this other area. Uh, twelve, the hostile cellar. Where's twelve? Oh, that's yeah. So that's an area that I hadn't used. Um, Got it. So there's another exit that goes to this, uh, the hostile cellar. Um, what is a shard shunner? Oh, a gang of halfling were rats. Yeah, it's weird. Like, why? I don't know. This is weird. I'm probably not going to use that. So uh, they return to the yawning portal. They bring Floon uh, in tow and. Uh, Volo and Floon, and um, uh, they all um, uh, they all have a drink. Uh, it would be kind of fun if something else crawled out of the yawning portal again, wouldn't it? I think that would be funny. Like, you know, we thought that that was a, a one-time incident. You know, the cat... 
knocked all my dice on the floor, and now I don't have. I'm missing some of my dice. But let's let, let what would crawl out. Let's take a look. Um, we'll go to D and D Beyond. This time we're going to go to uh, Xanathar's Guide, and we're going to look at. Um, Random encounters. We will go with Underdark. Underdark encounters. And we will roll. What is this? Uh, it's a D100, right? Yeah. So we have a 92. Ga no, we're not going to have ghasts. Um, we could do some ghouls. Um, ghouls might be fun. Let's roll again and see what else we get. It's 86. Hobgoblins, half ogres. Ah, hobgoblins aren't climbing out of the thing. Uh, 79. Why are we using this one? You know what we should be using? If only somebody wrote like a really good sort of dungeon level based random encounter chart. You know, if only we had something like that. Oh, look. Yeah, that's right. Somebody did write that. Let's see, let's go to the dungeon section here. Random tables, traps, monuments, items, town event. The random dungeon monster tables, because there's no dungeon. So uh, determine the dungeon level is one, because this is coming from the first level of Waterdeep. Uh, I modeled this after the dungeon master rules in, um, uh, in the original first edition DMG, which I liked a lot and I felt was missing even from Xanathar's guide. So we roll, and we roll an eight. So that means since it's one to 16, we roll on monster table one. That's these guys. And that way it stays a little closer. And we roll another 20 and we get a three flying snakes. There, now we're talking. How many flying snakes? Two D, uh, flying snakes I think are relatively low CR. We'll do 2D6 flying snakes. Six flying snakes. Um, And then what else? Uh, maybe something else comes out of there too. Let's roll again. We roll a two. We roll again. We get a 14. Oh, flying snakes and a giant bat. Um, flying snakes are kind of a pain in the ass. We'll probably have four of those. Uh, and a giant bat. Um, so we have an encounter if we want one. Right. If if I kind of don't because I only have three people jumping right into chapter two, kind of sucks when most people are missing. I have to be careful; my mic stand is going to fall off. So um, you can move that down. Cat's meowing. Um, uh, so having an encounter handy isn't so bad, and I've got the map. I've got the battle map for. Um, uh, for the yawning portal so I could put that out. Although I don't have my plastic sheet. We'll see. Maybe I could just describe it. I don't need to, I don't need to, maybe I could do some theater of the mind. So, uh, and then, uh, oh, Volo's, uh, the deed to the, uh, uh, the deed to Troll Skull Manor. Now I believe, uh, is somebody, I, I think I actually have, uh, the deed. Oh, I should switch back. Um, uh, if we go to drive through, uh, log in. Oh, D&D Beyond. Whoops. Ah, oh, God, DMs Guild. Why is it so slow? There we go. Log in. Uh, we are going to look for the deed. Uh, I didn't buy this. I thought for sure I bought this. Uh, I am going to buy it. I'm going to use my account credit. Why wouldn't you use your account credit if you got it? And there we have the deed. 
take a look at the no background version. Uh, ah. So there we have the thing. So here's the trick, right? I'll give you a, here's a good old Sly Flourish trick for you. Copper resume paper. If you haven't figured out about copper resume paper, you can buy it on Amazon. I bought a big box and I stick it in my printer. My printer's a piece, piece of crap, uh, black and white thing. Uh, but we print it and look at that. So we hit print. And then all my power goes out because of my giant printer. Uh, I have a lot of account credit because I have two, uh, two Adventures League adventures that continue to sell, and I never cash out my <laughs> I never cash out my credit. I rarely cash it out, so I just I keep it there because. Uh, so there I have a deed. Look at that, a deed to Troll Skull Manor. Um. Yeah, so I have two Adventures League adventures, and they continue to make money. Um, and I keep the credit in there so that I can buy anything from the DMs Guild and never have to think about it. Uh, so that's that's how I use it. Um, cool. So I should uh, we should go back to that. Uh, So I will link this, the Troll Skull Manor deed. Um, da, da, da. And of course, always make sure to add your affiliate ID. So you get more of that credit. You can buy more crap. Um, yeah, so that's cool, right? So that starts chapter two. They get the deed. I, I kind of like the idea that like Volo uh, sort of brings out, I don't have the money. I know I said I was gonna give you a whole pile, but here is the deed. Um, uh, you know, here is the deed and we'll sign it all uh, when we get everything together. Uh, and, um, you know, it'd be great. And then the party's like, what are you talking about? I don't want a deed. I want I want my money. And then, ah, flying snakes. And then snakes come pouring and a giant bat come flying out of the thing. And it's like, did Volo set that up? You know? So that could be fun. Um, and we were all there to enjoy. And again, I don't want to get too far into chapter two when not a lot of the players are there. So, but then we begin chapter two. Um, uh... So I think that that will be like the scene. Wow, I got like 13 minutes left to do like all four sections of this of this thing. Well, we know we, there's a few things we don't need to do. I'm not going to be doing fantastic locations. Uh, monsters, I will have giant uh, flying giant bat um, orc wizard uh, bandits. Yeah. Deed. Uh, other interesting NPC. I don't think any new NPCs, I mean, uh, are going to really get um, brought up. I can't think of any. So I think they'll all just, I don't think we need to have any NPC broken out for this, for these notes. Uh, this gives you an example of how you trim your, um, you trim your checklist down to what makes sense for the game you're preparing. That's something I talked about in my, the other videos that I did. Um, I got my stuffed, my stuffed Cthulhu, stuffed Cthulhu. Um, apparently the cat has been knocking that around too. It's sitting here, here in the desk. Um, so what are their secrets? Um, hell is bleeding into water deep like cracks in a dam. Um, or like water you know all around them hell is kind of coming the the barriers are getting thin. Someone somewhere Uh, 
Um, Xanathar has his attention on Floon and Rainier, or, or Rainer, right? Rainier never remember. I have that right. Uh, for reasons he does not waste trivial matter. He does not waste his mind on trivial matters. Uh, who is the other? Oh, um... There's a whole other group of spies. Uh, uh, so this is you want to add the Brigand Brigand Darth Brigand Darth characters are out there. Um, what's it called? Uh, not re. Re-enabled. Um, right, the gray hands work for the black staff. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Three more secrets in eight minutes. What other secrets are going on in Waterdeep Dragon Heist? Um, oh. This is more, this isn't a secret, this is a scene. Um, What other, so this is where you got like a lot of threads in a lot of different directions and it's always worth kind of keeping track of those, those threads and directions. Um, uh, I am using Sublime. It's right up here. Um, people always ask what editor I use. And yeah, Sublime is what I use on my Mac and my PC. I just like it. I use it for coding and I use it for this. Uh, and I just, it's just nice. I don't think about it. Like there's no formatting. There's no screwing around with the font. No, 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 no problem. Everyone asks. That's why I put it in the notes. Um, I don't want to uh, worry about what my text editor looks like. You know, I want to worry about the text. So um, I want I want something that I can read easily and that doesn't hurt my eyes and that I can spend hours staring at and not go blind. And I want to not have to worry about little odds and ends. I'll, I'll, like another thing about OneNote that drove me a little crazy is like everything is in a little text box and you can move the text boxes around and you can shrink them and extend them. And when you shrink them and extend them on your PC, it changes how your horizontal scroll on your phone. And I was like, ah, that kind of stuff makes me, you know, little tiny things. I just, just show it to me, you know, just wrap the text. So 
Um, uh, yeah. Uh, Twiga says, I'm more of a V, I don't know what a VS code guy is, but Sublime is cool. Yeah, I, I use Sublime for a lot of my code, but I'm, nowadays I'm doing a lot of Python and a lot of data analysis stuff. So I use um, Jupyter Notebook and Jupyter Labs uh, for a lot of that. But I, uh, all the code that I write for all my Sly Flourish stuff is all done in, um, oh, Visual Studio, yeah, sorry. Um, all my code uh, for Sly Flourish, uh, all the website code and everything like that is all written in, uh, I do it all in Sublime and Transmit nerd we're all nerds we're all nerds here five minutes one secret oh what can i do um how about the statues That's a big secret. Let it work. So that's kind of it, right? I got my strong start. I got my scenes and my secrets. Um, uh, I've got my monsters and my deeds. Uh, you know, kind of all all of that is is straight. Um, so I think we are all set uh what other is there anything else interesting going on in that game no uh so i don't know if we talked about it but uh ghosts of salt marsh has been announced uh and um uh i ordered i pre-ordered the beetle and grim uh silver edition of salt marsh uh i'm excited for that because i'm gonna run that for two games two groups uh evil john bought the ship i almost bought the ship and then I didn't buy the ship. I was like, oh, I just don't have the room anywhere. I saw it. My game shop had it. Um, but then I also saw, so then I bought a whole bunch of Paizo flip map, Pathfinder flip maps of ships. So I've got like now five ship flip mats, big ones and small ones and pirate ships and all kinds of stuff, including their little boxed one where you have like a little raft and stuff. And that's cool. Um, and then I s ordered the Beetle and Grim one and it's got a bunch of ship ships in it too. So I'm going to be swimming in ship mats, ship mats that's a scary thing to say so that's cool but uh i was listening to dragon talk where they interviewed the two fellows from beetle and grim and talked about their um talked about the silver edition and they mentioned that they are doing two or three others this year and including a platinum edition and i i think i know that in may they are having a uh, dragon or a uh, stream of many eyes style event, but I think they're going to be announcing more than just uh, Salt Marsh. Like I thought, like oh, that's where they're going to talk more about Salt Marsh. But no, they're talking a lot about Salt Marsh now, so they're probably going to talk about their fall stuff. And it, I bet I think there's a lot of stuff coming out in the fall um, because I mean, Beetle and Grim alone are doing multiple boxes this year. That's going to be pretty crazy. Um, Evil John says platinum for the big hardcover in May. Oh, Evil John's going to be there, buying tickets and flying to L.A. That's awesome. Congratulations. I'd love to hear a firsthand accounting. Um, so, oh, the Beetle and Grimm. We'll, we'll take a quick look. I got a minute, so let's take a look at the Beetle and Grimm. Uh, uh, Beetle and Grimm. So these guys make these, like, really high-end... Um, uh, really high-end box sets of uh um we'll do the non-spoiler version uh the high-end box sets of an adventure so you get like a big box and it's full of stuff so imagine like this sort of thing but you have all of them and they're all full color so you get you know these these nice high quality handouts you get these battle mats you know multiple battle mats a big area mat um these encounter cards where they fold over on one side. You can fold them over your DM screen and they have all of the, they're, they're built per encounter. So instead of having like one card for each monster, you have the entire encounter card ready to go. So that's pretty cool. 
uh, and there's going to be an amulet and a pin. And uh, the whole thing is reorganized. And all the artwork is on separate pieces of paper. So you can show each piece of artwork independently. Uh, and it's got its own custom DM screen designed for it. Uh, and that added a bunch of bonus bonus encounters. And then they have pre-gen characters that people can... Um, people can play if they don't if they don't want uh, uh, to play the one that's there. So uh, lots of stuff, and it's not cheap. It's two hundred bucks. No, hundred and I think it's one hundred and seventy five dollars. But it's ten percent off right now if you get it's one hundred seventy five bucks. But you get ten percent off if you get it right now. So that's another seventeen dollars off. Um, and yeah, so it looks mostly unlike the platinum edition that Waterdeep had, which had a ton of physical things. Like it had the Stone of Galore and had all this physical stuff, and that was five hundred bucks. Um, this one is less than two hundred dollars, but is mostly focused on the paper, the paper stuff that you get. Um, so yeah, I'm excited for it. And I, 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 you know, I was talking to my wife about it, and I said like, whatever the next big adventure they have, if I haven't already run it. And I plan on running it. I'm going to go ahead and buy one of these because I think it would be really cool to, to, to really get the full experience. And and the cool bit is um, I, I usually play for two different groups. So it'll be an opportunity. I'll, I'll sort of get double the value. So 175 feels like a lot. But when you think about, well, I have five or six people and we're going to play for, you know, probably a year and, you know, three hours a week, you know, it's like 150 hours times the number of people. It's way under a dollar an hour, right? It's you, you get a lot from that. So, um, Evil John says, I would put a card on file with Beatles and Grimm and subscribe to whatever they're making. Yeah. So, I mean, I looked at the Waterdeep one and I would love to have it, uh, but I already ran it for one group and I was like, I don't, you know, yeah, I think I'll be okay. I would have loved to have it. Um, but yeah, so, uh, but apparently they're going to be doing other platinum editions this year. So whatever the next big thing is, they're going to have a platinum edition to that, which means makes me sound like another adventure. So we will see two adventures this year would be funny, especially if they did a one to 11, two one to 11 adventures. Anyway, that is it for today's show. Uh, I, the cool bit is now all my notes are already on my phone. I don't have to worry about having them. They're, they're, they're just sitting there. Um, and let me, let me see that they're there. Some files, uh, Dragon Heist. Yeah. Uh, back, back, let's see, files, three March Dragon Heist. There it is. And it has the secrets. Oh, it doesn't like, oh, you know why? I didn't drop it into markdown mode. There we go, markdown mode. Oh, look at those beautiful bullets. Sewer boss fight, secrets. See, so when I drop it into markdown mode, it looks really good on this phone. So, yeah. I wonder why the line breaks for the secrets didn't carry over in the text version. That's strange. It packed all this into one paragraph. I don't know why. Whatever. Looks good. Uh, so uh, have a great week. And uh, if you haven't watched the two videos that look at, uh, do a full overview of Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master. Um, let me put some nice artwork up here for finale. Um, feel free to take a look at those videos. If you have any questions about what is in Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master, you will see it there. You can also download the preview if you want to see the eight steps and you can follow along with the eight step, um, the, uh, uh, the eight step, uh, video. And, uh, yeah, so I plan on doing eight more videos 10 minutes-ish each, although some of them will probably be shorter, maybe a five-minute video on a couple of them and maybe a longer video on some of them. Like Secrets probably needs more than five minutes or 10 minutes and, and other ones like The Strong Start might not be more than five. So I'm hoping to do a series of those videos, one for each of the eight steps and then putting in that thing and then anybody that wants to look and see like what are the Lazy Dungeon Master ones, they can look at those. And that way this video can be more about focused on the game itself and talking about other things D&D like we did today. So thank you all for coming. Thank you all for the uh, wonderful chat in Twitch chat. And for those of you watching on YouTube, thank you for viewing and I will see you guys next week. Have a great week.